I think for this one, the first thing you should do for part D is you should um, solve one minus two X equal to zero. Then you should find out where one minus two X is greater than zero and one minus two X is less than zero on the interval from zero to one, because that's our region of integration. Then you could um, write the piecewise function. which would be absolute value of one minus two X. We don't need to define it on the whole domain. We just need to define it on this interval from zero to one. And then only after you've done that, do you wanna take your integral from zero to one and you wanna break it up into um, two or more pieces. Okay. So, um, why don't you guys try this? And then we will finish off this worksheet and we will start looking at the second way we can find integrals, which is uh, substitution. Let me give you some time to do this one. I'll give you three minutes, do your best. Jefferson, you finish this one, my friend. Almost. Uh, if you're not done yet, I need to get more time. All right. Keep working, folks. Keep working.
All right, let's um, <clears throat> let's try this. So let me move this off to the side first. The first thing I need to do is I need to um, let me change this to uh, red because that's just comments, okay? So if I want to solve this one minus two x equal to zero to find out where we cross the uh, x-axis, you're going to add two x to both sides. So you're going to have one is equal to two x. You can divide both sides by two. So this gives you x is equal to one half, right? So then what we're going to do, here, let me create more room. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a little number line. So if I created a little number line right here, here's one half. My region of integration is um, zero to six, oops, I'm highlighting the wrong thing, is zero to one. So we're gonna go here's zero and here's one. This is the only region that I care about. Now, for me, I think of things graphically. So when I look at this, this is a line. It's a line of slope negative two. So I already kind of feel like I know that the graph is going to look something like that, <laughs> right? It's a line with a negative slope that crosses at one half. If you need to, you can use a test point. You could plug in a one fourth. Oops. You could. You could plug in a one fourth. And if you did that, you'd have a one minus two times one fourth. That's one minus one half. That's a positive number. So it's positive over here. You could plug in a three fourths, right? One minus six fourths. That's a negative number. So what you find is that we find that. Um, I can tell where it's going to be greater than zero. It's going to be greater than zero on for x between zero and one half. And it's going to be less than zero for x greater than, or let's say from x going from one half to one. Okay. So when I go to write my piecewise defined function, on the parts where it's greater than zero, I leave it. So this is going to be one minus two x for zero, for x between zero and one half. But for the parts where it's negative, I'm going to multiply by negative one. So it'll be negative one times this from zero, uh, from one half to one. Is there any questions about how I got that piecewise defined function? Okay, then all I got to do is take my integral and split it up into two pieces. I go from zero to one half, absolute value of one minus two x dx plus going from one half to one, one minus two x in absolute value dx. And then I replace the absolute values with the appropriate piece. So from zero to one half, it's going to be the, the positive one. So from zero to one half, you got one minus two x dx. And then from one half to one, you're going to multiply by negative one. So this becomes one half to one. You're going to have, I'm going to distribute the negative, negative one plus two x dx. Now we just find the antiderivative and plug in the numbers. So this is going to be x minus, um, x squared, we're going to go from 0 to 1 half. And then this guy is going to be negative x plus x squared. And we're going to go from 1 half to 1. So when you plug in the numbers, you're going to get 1 half minus 1 fourth 
That's what you get when you plug in the one half. You're going to get a zero minus zero when you plug in the zero. For the second part, you're going to get a negative one plus one. And then you're going to get um, minus negative one half plus one fourth. So this one's going to be easy enough to simplify. So um, negative one plus one is obviously zero. And then the negative and the negative becomes a positive. But then when you distribute, you get a negative there, right? So this is going to be um, one half plus one half is one minus one fourth minus one another fourth. That's going to give you a net result of one half, I think. So I just, I distribute the negative here. Is there any questions about this? All right, cool. How do you find zero? What do you mean, Terry? I don't understand your question. How did I find this guy? So our region of integration is from zero to one, right? So the first thing I do is I figured out where it crossed the x-axis. It crosses the x-axis at one half. So what that means is um, from zero to one half, it's gonna be one thing. And from one half to one, it's gonna be something else. I'm taking this region from zero to one and I'm splitting it into two pieces because I found out where it crossed the axis. Then I can use a test point to figure out if it's positive or if it's negative. In this case, it's positive on the zero to one half piece. Does that make sense? 